All right, I don't need this on right now. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about that problem that you guys did today. Uh, this is the future. I tossed a ball up in the air, so uh, super interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> first thing I noticed with certain students having an issue with this is uh, their struggle kind of defining different accelerations within that. So uh, I, I made a slow motion video of me tossing a ball in the air, and I want to remind you that acceleration is the change in velocity over a change in time, okay? Um, when it stays the same, we expect velocity to go up at a steady rate or down at a steady rate, okay, compared to time. But this ratio of how quickly this specifically happens um, happens in, in different amounts of time. If it happens in different amounts of time, uh, it can cause a different acceleration. Here's what I mean, okay? Let's watch, uh, let me kind of flip the video here of uh, me toss, tossing the ball in the air, and I'll show you what I mean, okay? So as you're watching this video, I'm just going to kind of show it going up. Let's go back real quick, okay? Right here, when I'm pushing up, what you'll notice from here, to there, right about there, probably a little bit before, you know, just, just a touch back, right there, from there to there, that entire time I was pushing upwards. I was causing the acceleration, if we assume up to be positive, I was causing a positive acceleration because the velocity was going from zero down here to some positive number. You'll also notice that it took this particular displacement. I guessed earlier at 0.25 meters, you can see here, that's probably a little bit more in this particular case. And the ball goes up in the air. When it's up in the air, from here to here, you'll notice that this took a lot more displacement than this one right here. So I would argue that also means it took a lot more time. It took a lot more time up here than it did down here in this particular section. Now the change in velocity and magnitude is the same. It would go from zero to however fast, let's make up a number, let's say five meters per second. It went from zero to five and then 5 to 0. So in both cases, it either went up 5 or down 5. But if you look at this ratio, even though the change in velocity was 5, both sections each took a different amount of time, and thus both are different accelerations. That's even just a number. We also know that they're different simply because of the sign. Come back to the video here real quick. Oops. Uh, there we are. Okay. We'll see that I go from zero to some positive number right there. Okay, zero to some positive number. And now we've got the max positive number. And then as it's rising in the air, it's going from some positive number back to zero. Right up here, you can actually see it stop here. Let's show that video fully so you can kind of see that I actually pretty close got it to stop. No, it's spinning, but it is in fact for a brief second actually in zero velocity. So first thing is to important to understand, just based on the definition of acceleration, why those are different acceleration. From that, <clears throat> from that, like we said, all the kinematic equations were designed such that acceleration is constant. So if there are different accelerations, it means we need different sets of variables for each of them. Okay? So uh, I made one set of variables wrote all of them down, don't need to be in this particular order, but I made one set of variables for when I'm pushing up. Now, the way I quickly showed this in my label is I said, hey, the velocity is going up, it's traveling up, but also during this time, it's accelerating up because I'm pushing it up during that, okay? You could also say like hand or push something there, okay? And then we make another set of variables over here for when it was in free fall, but on the way up. So for that, I said, hey, velocity is up and acceleration is down because of gravity. Um, so from that, we start to put in the information that we knew from the problem. Well, it started off at zero velocity in my hand. I don't know how fast it left my hand. I don't know what it accelerated at. I don't know how much time it took, but the problem did tell us that it traveled 0.25 meters during that time. This is where a picture can be super helpful. All right, so we got uh, just hand, so from there to there, we'll call that displacement one, displacement one. And right here is when gravity takes over and goes up. That's displacement two. I specifically like these lines followed by the arrows. 
um, because the arrows nicely show the displacement. And the lines specifically show us the time in which it was initial velocity, initial time, initial position, final velocity, final time, final position for this segment. You can also clearly see that the finals of the first section are going to be the initials for the second. So this should be 0.25 meters. A lot of people get stuck right here because I say, how fast does the object leave the hand? And they want to answer the question right here, but they can't because there's not enough information. So with that, you go to the next set. I know the velocity initial is the velocity final, but I don't know how much that is. Since we went to the very top, I do know the final velocity up there is zero. I know the acceleration is negative g. It is specifically negative because in this problem we made up positive. And the displacement during that time is positive 1.2 meters. So we have three sets of variables here, which means we can solve for anything else. This would be the amount of time it was in that section. This would be the amount of time that's in that section. This would be the velocity initial for this section, which would be here, which is also in turn the velocity final for that. So I'm going to use this equation. Velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2a delta x. I'm going to cancel velocity final because it's zero. And then I'm going to subtract vi squared on this side. Divide by 2a. Well, that's not correct. That's not correct. Ooh, okay, my apologies. I'm trying to get vi. I was trying to solve for something else right now. I'm going to subtract 2a delta x on the other side. And then square root vi. Now you'll notice you have a negative under the square root, which you can't have. Don't take care of that yet. Uh, a lot of times people will just erase that knowing there's not supposed to be a negative under there and it's going to come back to backfire. If you've done this correct, you'll see that the negative does in fact disappear because I'm going to plug in now negative 2 times acceleration is negative g times the displacement of positive 1.2. Square root that and we get vi, which should be 4.85 meters per second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, now, minder with the square root technically is plus or minus, but I think about the situation, yes, it is in fact plus, so I know that is plus 4.85 meters per second, which in turn means I know that this is plus 4.85 meters per second. Answering our first question. Our second question is how much acceleration did I push with? And now you can see that that's going to be pretty darn easy in here because I've got three variables. <laughs> this is what I was actually accidentally solving for with the algebra a second ago. I got ahead of myself. So I'm going to race over here. And now to find acceleration, I've got this one, this one, and this one. I'm once again actually going to use the exact same equation. Uh, velocity initial is zero this time. And like I said, I was solving for acceleration before, so I'm going to divide by 2 delta x. And that should give me acceleration. Velocity final is 4.85 meters per second. Square that, divide by 2 times 0 0.25 meters is acceleration. I estimated this in class. Chances are very good that actually that displacement is a little small, like you watched in the video just a minute ago. So that would make the acceleration a little bit smaller in that particular case. But if I'm not mistaken, the correct answer to this was is it 47. Yes, 47.04 meters per second squared. Whenever you're doing one of these problems, um, if you're a completionist, you can feel free to answer everything else, but you don't have to unless it's specifically asked. The last question that was asked was, what is the total time that's in the air? So, as you saw in the slow motion video, okay, uh, time began with my hand pushing it. Uh, you got to be really careful about what's asked. If the problem had straight up asked, and might in the future, how long was it in the air, we would not need to worry about this right here. But it said total time elapsed from the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out how much time uh, this particular process took. So I'm going to race here. To get that, um, you can use any of the equations with time. Your easiest bet is this one. 
just a reminder that this is in fact this equation right here, which I'll show because I subtract that to the other side and divide by delta T to get A. And once again, these are in fact delta V. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is not what I'm solving for here, so let's go back. This does mean if you do it like this, you could actually find time is equal to change in velocity over acceleration. Now you kind of got to be smart with change in velocity is not velocity, uh, but it is in fact positive 4.85. The acceleration is 47.05 meters per second squared, which would give us 0 0.1, sec 0 0.1 seconds. Now, as far as the time in the air, you have two ways to solve this. I'm only going to do it one way. Okay. The two ways to solve this are, I could do this. I've already got this kind of nicely in place. I could figure out this time here, which would be the time up in the air. And then I could make a new set of variables for when the velocity is down and acceleration is down, AKA when it's traveling downward. If I had done that, velocity initially would be zero meters per second. I wouldn't know velocity final acceleration would still be negative g. Uh, I don't know time. The displacement, since I'm going from the very tippy top all the way to the ground, well, that's 1 meter, that's 0.25, and that's 1.2. So the displacement would be negative 2.45 meters. If you've done it like this, you cal we already calculated this one. We would calculate both of those two right there, add them all up, and that would give us our total time. What I'm going to do instead over here is, since this is the same acceleration, rather than split it up into the way up and the way down, we're just going to say while acceleration is in fact gravity. So we're just going to do one set of variables. The initial velocity of that is still 4.85, but now rather than the velocity final being here at the top, the velocity final is going to be here at the ground, when it's traveling downward before it hits the ground. So I don't know this anymore. I do know that acceleration is negative g. Don't know time, that's what we're trying to get. And the displacement is a straight line path, straight line path, even though the dotted line here kind of represents where it's actually going, displacement is a straight line path from where it began to where it ended. So I'm going to add this one meter to the one point to so the 0.25 and actually use negative 1.25 meters there. Give me a second, I'm going to shut the door. With those three variables, I'm going to go ahead and go straight for time. Uh, the shortcut to this, by the way, is you can find velocity final and then get time. But uh, eventually there's going to be problems where you need to be able to do this. So let's practice with it now. With velocity initial acceleration and displacement, trying to get time, the equation in question is going to be this one right here. Okay, And I don't usually like to plug numbers in early, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay. While I'm doing that, because there's a t squared, a t to the first, and a t to the zero, this is a quadratic. And so we solve quadratics by the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation assumes, actually let's make that a capital A, that everything is equal to zero. So we're going to set this up while we plug numbers in the same way that this looks here. So x squared, t squared, I'm going to plug that in. So that's going to be 1 half times negative g times delta t squared. b times x to the first, that's x to the first, or the variable to the first. And the vi is 4.85 meters per second. Now, you'll notice the c, all of these are on the same side, and this isn't. So I actually need to subtract this over so that everything's equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the displacement, which is already negative, which gives me my final constant. If I want to know what the constants are, everything next to the x squared, 1 half negative g, that's my a. Everything next to the x to the first, t to the first, that is my b. And everything added on the end, that 
is my C. C. Okay. Now I can use this. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Negative B. So that's negative 4.85 meters per second. Write a number, write its units. Plus or minus 4.85 meters per second squared. This is under the square root. Let me see if it's still okay. I think so. Minus 4A is this whole mess, which is negative 4.9, half, 9.8, times C, which is positive 1.25 meters. All of that is over 2 times A, so that actually cancels out the 1 half, so that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. Now this looks like a mess. But there's a video online that kind of shows how essentially what this is doing and how it's basically the exact same thing as solving for VF first and then delta T. That being said, when, because you're going to get two answers, and the two answers are going to come from the plus or minus right here, I like to do just everything inside of that first. So 4.85 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 1.25 equals 6.93. And I'll let you figure this out why the units of that are in fact meters per second. Now what you'll notice here is I'm going to take negative 4.85 plus or minus 6.95, but I better end up with a negative time, I'm sorry, a positive time rather. Um, negative times don't really help us here. So you'll notice if I were to take negative 4.85 plus that, I get a positive answer, divided by negative is going to give me a negative, so I'm just going to take negative 4.85 minus that, divided by 9.8, and we actually end up with 1.2 seconds, the total time that it's in the air. Also, what you should have gotten if you'd done up and down and added them together still should have been 1.2 seconds. So that's not what was asked. What's the total time? 1.2 seconds was the time it was in the air. 0.1 seconds that we calculated here earlier, that's the amount of time it was thrown up. So the total time it was in the air, the answer to the third part is 1.3 seconds. And that's how to do that problem.